Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Let's Paint a Mini. It's been a little while. I haven't posted a lot of stuff to the channel lately. Sorry about that. But you know what? I figured we should probably just knock out uh, more multiple miniatures all at once. We're doing more Mansions of Madness. We are looking at all of the investigators that came with the, at the time of recording, latest expansion pack, Horrific Journeys. Uh, these are uh, Jim Culver, Agnes Baker... Trish Scarborough, and what's this dude's name? Silas something? Silas Marsh. That's that dude right there. Aquaman, but not Aquaman. That's that's who he is right there. Uh, so yeah, I figured that we would just go ahead and knock out all of these guys. Now, the other thing that we're going to try to do is we're going to try to not use too many colors. We're going to try not to overcomplicate things too much. So we're actually going to be using a bunch of colors for multiple purposes throughout different miniatures, and we're going to kind of disperse things. Uh, it's, it's just a good way to get some practice in, you know, using the same paints for multiple miniatures and just kind of planning ahead and that kind of thing. Now, as you can see, what I did was I started with a, um, a spray primer of pure white. Side note PSA regarding primers. So you may have noticed that some of the miniatures that I painted for the channel have looked a little sandy, for lack of a better word. They've just got a little bit of a rough texture on it. And I think the reason why it's because of this guy right here. Okay, so this was like a, a brand of primer that I had gotten a little while ago, and every single miniature that I've tried to paint using this primer has had that really rough, sandy texture to it. It's just gross to like even handle and feel with too. So if you can, this is the one that I used for these miniatures. This is the one that I've uh, used for other miniatures, and this stuff has worked out great. So Army Painter, good brand of miniature. Primer, Armory, not a good brand. Bad, good, good, bad, bad, good, okay? Good, got it, good, yeah, good one, bad one. That's all. So we're gonna start with some fair highlight right here. And we're gonna use this as a skin tone for Agnes and Trish. That's pretty much all that we're gonna do with this color. Another thing that I thought that we would try doing is we would try to explore different brushes. So I thought that as a challenge, I would just go to my like local department store here, and I just bought a like a value pack of really not name brand uh, brushes right here. These are actually just really really cheap brushes. I think I got this whole pack for five or six dollars. And I thought, why don't we try to make some convincing miniatures using these brushes right here? I've actually used these brushes before on some other miniatures. And they mostly work out okay, actually, and they've got pretty good lifespans for them. So I thought that we would just open up a new pack and try using these just to see how other people felt about them. So if you want to, you know, if you want to give them a shot yourself, you can. I think we can use not quite the smallest one, but probably the next one up. So I think this was a uh, three-sized? Yeah, three-sized. So we'll use that. It comes with a little plastic clip right there. By the way, if you want, you can actually uh, take those things and you can kind of recycle those for uh, other uses later on. You can use those as... Uh, little stands for, you know, putting flying miniatures onto. If uh, you're like me and you like the Doom board game and you want to have your Kaku Demons flying in the air, that's a, a good good uh, thing to use for that. Anyway, so we're going to use the fair skin for, like I said, Trish and Agnes. It doesn't really matter which one we start with, so we'll just start with this one here. All right, so that's Agnes down. We've got her skin tone finished up there. So we'll move on to Trish. Trish doesn't take quite as long because only her... She's wearing gloves, so you don't need to worry about coating her hands. We're going to do something with the gloves later on. But uh, yeah, you just need to worry about her face, which is covered up by a lot of hair, as well as sort of a scarf that she's wearing. And her uh, forearms here, which are... Yeah, not too bad. So this one doesn't take quite as long. Okay, so yeah, there's there's Trish. All right, so now we've we've done what we want to do with our fair highlight, so I'm going to rinse my brush off. Next up, we're going to move on to some tanned highlight right here, and we're going to use this for the skin tone for... Ah, I'm not gonna, knocking stuff around. We're going to use this for the skin tone for Silas here. We can probably use the next larger up brush a little bit. I think this is five. Yeah, size five or whatever. I think that uh, since... Silas has a lot of skin showing. I think that we can probably safely get away with this brush. I'll even just get a little bit of water on the tip of that brush. Water down the paint a little bit. That'll be fine. Okay. 
Obviously, you can see that he's got an eye patch here. If you can, go around the eye patch, but don't worry about getting any paint on it because we're going to go over that with another color later on. So, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you want to try to go around it really carefully, you can. If you want to just go over the whole face like it's nothing, that's fine too. However you prefer to do it. Okay, there we go. So now we've got uh, Silas's tan skin tone right there. So that looks pretty solid. Now what we're also going to do with this tanned highlight is we're going to take Trish Scarborough here. Now if we refer to her artwork, which we're going to try to emulate the artwork, the artwork, she's got kind of blondish brownish hair, sort of a dirty blonde hair. I figured that we'll just go ahead and, like I said at the beginning of the video, we're going to try to use colors for multiple purposes here. Why don't we just go ahead and make her hair color this tan skin color, and I think that after the uh, the shade that we use at the end of it, I think that will be just fine. So let's go ahead and do this. There we go, so that's all that we're gonna do with uh, Trish's hair right there. That looks pretty decent, okay. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off. Next up, we're gonna move on to some dark highlights. And we're going to use this for more more things than just, more than just one or two things, how about that? <laughs> so the first thing that we're gonna use it for is actually Jim's skin tone. Uh, if we refer to his artwork, Jim Culver is a black gentleman. So we're gonna go ahead and give him that dark skin tone. Uh, let's move our brush back, uh, brush size back down just a little bit. We'll go back to the three here, and we'll use that for his skin. He's got kind of some hair coming out from uh, the back of his hat back here. I wouldn't worry about it, to be honest. It's not really enough to really call any major attention to, so I would just go ahead and go over his hair with this dark highlight color, and I think that you will be fine with that. Okay, that's it for Jim Culver's skin tone there. Next up, we're gonna move on to Agnes, who has kind of darker hair a little bit, so we're just gonna use that same dark highlight color for Agnes's hair. And I think that that will work out just fine. There we go, Agnes's hair looks okay there. That'll be all right. We're also going to use that same dark highlight color for Silas's pants. I imagine he just wears sort of, you know, um, practical attire, I guess you could say. He's a sailor, so he probably doesn't have the fanciest clothes. So yeah, he's probably just got a sort of, you know, generic brown set of trousers here. He's got a little bit of paint onto his arm there. That's okay, we can kind of scrape that off a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, you know what I just realized? I forgot to get Silas's feet when I did the tan skin earlier. I forgot to do that. Well, I'll be sure to uh, do that as soon as I finish up with this dark highlight color here. What we'll do, too, is we'll go ahead and use that same color for his hair, too, because he's got pretty dark hair. There we go, that'll be fine there. Alright, like I said, let's uh, just real quickly go back to that tan skin color for a second. So that we can get Silas's feet here. Uh oh, got a little bit on the uh, on the base there. That's alright, if I need to go back over it with some black later on, I can do that. Alright, I think I missed a little bit of a spot with his hand here too, so let's just get that. And we'll go back over that spot that I accidentally got some brown on with his arm. There we go. There we go, that'll be fine. Okay. Next up, we're gonna move on to my very favorite shade of brown here. This is Leather Brown. Very versatile color. I've gushed about this color on the channel before. Just kind of a, you know, tannish brown color. That's really all that it is. I'll get out a fair amount because we're going to be doing several things with this. All right, now I think that the first thing that we're going to do is Jim Culver's suit here. It has a little bit of a sort of brownish 
you know, kind of look to it. But we kind of want to use a different sort of color to the rest of his, like, to, to his skin tone. So we're going to use a uh, slightly uh, lighter shade of brown here. And we're just going to go over a suit. Now, I think that his shirt is white. So rather than do anything with that, we're just going to go around his shirt. So we're going to do the suit and his tie. We'll figure that his tie is probably matching his suit color. So we'll just go over his tie and his suit with this leather brown. So now uh, Jim Culver's got a nice sort of like tan suit there, but the shade that we're going to use at the end is going to uh, kind of brown that up just a little bit. All right, next up we're going to uh, move on to uh, Trish right here. And I figure we'll just go ahead and um, make her shoes that leather brown color. I think that that'll be fine. All right, and then we're also going to use that same color for her gloves. I figured that, um, you know, your first instinct would be that her gloves would match her suit, but I kind of have a feeling that she's a little bit um, less fashionable than that and a little bit more kind of uh, kind of down to earth and just kind of would find the first sort of practical things that would work for her, so the first kind of practical gloves that she would find. That seems to be more in line with her character, I personally think. If you want, you can, um, you know, save save her gloves for the color that we're going to use for the rest of her coat later on, but that's up to you. There we go, so now her uh, her gloves and shoes are done right there, and those look pretty solid. Okay. We'll also take Agnes right here, and then using that same leather brown, we're going to go ahead over her book and her pencil that she's got in her other hand. I assume it's a pencil. Like it's kind of kind of vague what it is. It could be like a cigar or a cigarette or something like that. But I imagine she's kind of like, you know, taking orders down or something like that because her character is a uh, waitress, I believe. Yeah, she's a waitress. Sorry, I was just looking at her card. So yeah, she probably just writes down a lot of orders using a a pen or a pencil or something like that. And I don't think the color needs to be, you know, too thought out or anything like that. I think that pretty much anything will functionally work. Yeah, there we go. That'll be fine. Okay. And then the last thing that we're going to do with that leather brown color is we're going to go ahead and get Silas's spear right here. Now you could do like uh, an earth brown or something like that for the spear itself and then the rope you could use this leather brown color, but I don't think it's going to be too huge of a deal to just make it all be one color as long as you use a wash that we're going to use, you know, later on. But that's up to you if you want to make it just one color, if you want to make it two colors. I think that if you want to just make it one color, it'll it'll be functional. I wouldn't worry about it. There we go. So that's uh, Silas' spear right there. All right. Yeah, you can see we're, we're making some progress on our miniatures there. All right, now next up, we're going to work on Trish's suit. And it's just sort of a, um, uh, a nice blue color you can kind of see there. So we're just going to use some regular old sapphire blue here. And we're going to use that to do Agnes's suit, overcoat, whatever word you want to use. And I think we can use that larger one that we were using earlier too, because not a lot of detail with the suit. And it's a fair amount of surface area here, so we can just use the larger brush to knock it out a little bit more quickly. Now Trisha's scarf seems to just be white, so what we'll do is we'll just make sure to go over just the coat, but the scarf that she's wearing around her neck, as well as the shirt that you can just barely see underneath the jacket, we're just going to leave that white. All 
Uh oh, got some paint on uh, her arm there. That's okay. That's one neat thing that I've noticed about these brushes. There's kind of a chisel end on the on the end of there that you can use to like chisel paint or kind of like scrape paint off if you accidentally mess up a little bit. So that's one thing that's kind of cool about these brushes. All right, and there we go. So now we've got Trisha's nice blue kind of suit there. Next up, we're going to move on to some grass green here. And we're going to use this for Agnes's shirt. Now, her smock that she has is still white. So we're going to just leave that white. You can see that in the art here. But her actual shirt seems to be green. Uh, well, her, like, sort of, I guess it's a dress, skirt. Skirt? Dress? Something? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's going to be green. And I think that uh, we can continue using the uh, the larger uh, five-size brush right here, and I think that that will be just fine. Alright, so there's Agnes with her nice green kind of dress right there. Oh, got some paint on her thigh again. Now, I imagine that she's just kind of wearing um, uh, some, like, you know, just white leggings or white socks or something like that. So we'll just leave her legs white, and I think that that will be just fine. Next, we're going to move on to a really lovely shade of gold, actually. This is a game color brand paint called Glorious Gold. These metallic paints of this brand are, are really weird and kind of thick. You can kind of see just how thick they are right there. But they are really, really, really nice colors. So we're going to go ahead and paint Jim Culver's Glorious Golden Trumpet with this glorious golden color. There we go. Yeah, that's a very, very nice gold color right there. Okay. Next up, we're just going to go to our handy-dandy honed steel right here, and we're going to use this for Silas's spear and for Trisha's revolver. So we'll just start with the spear of Silas. Shouldn't take too long here. There we go. Easy enough right there. Okay. And uh, I think that, like, the handle of the revolver could, in theory, be like a like a wood color like a wood stock color but yeah i figured that uh it'll just be a solid steel revolver that'll be fine there we go so now we've got that uh nice steel color there for that revolver okay now we've actually finished up most of the major steps. Now we're gonna move on to some, some washes and shades. Now this is something that I haven't used for the channel before, but I've used it a couple of times on some other miniatures and I actually really like it a lot. This is another game color brand thing. This is a game color wash and it's sepia shade. This is basically just a dark brown, but it adds um, a little bit more than just adding, you know, shade to the recesses of the miniatures. It also just kind of gives it a sort of like brownish, tannish tint all around too. And I feel like that's going to work very well with these two guys right here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now we're going to use a uh, much larger brush here for this. We're just going to go ahead and use this, uh, what was this, seven? Yeah, seven size brush right here. And we'll just use that for the sepia shade. Let's start with uh, um, uh, Jim here, because I think that his trumpet is probably more dry than Silas's spear. So we'll do this. Uh, so yeah, we'll basically just do this as though it's like one of the, um, you know, normal shades that we use. So we'll just go over the whole miniature like this. And yeah, that fills in a lot, like a really, really nice sort of caramel color there. I might make uh, his tie a different color after I do this, actually, because it does just kind of blend a little bit too much with the suit, I think. He's, his color scheme matches too well. I don't know, yeah, the tie doesn't stand out enough to me, so I might uh, do the tie a different color after this dries. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens as we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, like I said, I, I actually really like this stuff a lot. It adds kind of a nice color scheme. Or, you know, adds a nice, like I said, sort of a caramel... Um, reddish brownish color to 
what you do. So if you have a lot of like browns and reds, it actually goes really, really nicely. Okay, so then I will do the same thing with Silas here. Now you may have noticed that uh, we haven't done his eye patch just yet, but that's okay because uh, we're gonna do that with some black, but I kinda wanna uh, use that black after we use all of the other steps. There we go, he looks nice and chiseled now. Yeah, there we go, that's, that's a nice color. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna rinse that brush off completely. All right, next up we're gonna use a shade that I've used for the channel before many times. This is Nuln Oil, and I think that this will work just fine for Trish and Agnes here. Let's we'll start with uh, Trish. If you want to also, you can probably safely get away with using the um, Agrax Earth Shade in place of this Nuln Oil, but I just find that the Nuln Oil, which is just kind of a grayish blackish color, tends to go a little bit better with um, green and blue. That's why I wanted to use this for these lovely ladies right here just because I think that it, uh, this shade happens to complement their attire a little bit better. There we go, so that's Trish. I think that she looks pretty good there. All right, now we'll do the same thing with Agnes here. All right, and that's Agnes right there. All right. I'm gonna let them completely dry before I move on to anything else. All right, so these guys are all completely dry now, and what I'm immediately noticing is that they've actually got uh, kind of eyebrows more so than I had initially noticed. So, and I also forgot Silas's sort of like mustache beard here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the dark highlights that I had earlier, and I'm just gonna touch up some of those little spots there. That's another nice thing about doing shades and washes is that sometimes after you're done with them, you find little tiny nuances that you're like, oh, I didn't notice that before, or, or whatever. So I'm just gonna use the, uh, the smallest of the brushes that I have here, and we're just gonna really lightly, really quickly, just get some eyebrows on Agnes here. There we go. We're gonna get um, Silas's sideburns and his mustache. There we go, now his face looks a little bit more complete there, okay. I think pretty much everyone else is okay. Um, I don't think that uh, Jim Culver has any really noticeable eyebrows there, so I think that's fine. Uh, and Trish doesn't really have any super noticeable eyebrows, I don't think, so we're just gonna leave her the way that she is. That's pretty good, okay. Next up, I kind of want Trish's suit to be just a little bit brighter, so I'm gonna take some true blue here, and I'm just gonna do a quick dry brushing of this true blue to bring out some highlights. Uh, to her coat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of the kind of uh, flatter brushes. Here we go, so we'll just use this kind of like flat brush right here. Um, if you have a dry brush at home, just go ahead and use a dry brush. But again, for the sake of sort of a challenge or, you know, whatever, I'm just gonna be using this set of $5 paint brushes to see if we can uh, crank out some, some decent miniatures here. And I would say that so far we're doing a pretty decent job. Yeah, let's see. Just gonna... There we go. There, we're just brightening up that, uh, that jacket a little bit. Highlight those buttons there a little bit too. Uh, so for dry brushing, what you kind of want to do is um, just sort of take your brush like this and just kind of like, you know, just barely get some paint onto your brush, but wipe off most of it. Um, technically speaking, if you want, you can just kind of like dip, get your brush into the, your little paint puddle there, and then you can just take like a paper towel and then wipe off most of it, and then you've got a lot of, uh, you've got kind of the same effect. Uh, but I don't really like to do that just because I think it's kind of wasteful, and I think that this uh, gets the same sort of thing across. So yeah, just get a little bit of paint onto your brush, but wipe off most of it. And then yeah, you're just gonna kind of, you know, go along, get the creases and all that and that'll just brighten up the coat pretty substantially. Yeah, that looks very nice. There we go, now Trisha's suit there is much brighter and a little bit catchier. I, I like that a lot. Yeah, there we go, that's lovely. Okay, I like that a lot. All right, 
And I think at this point, all we're going to do is just touch up with our little tiny details. I'm going to start with the eyes, because I'm gutsy and I like to do eyes, especially if I don't have a little itty bitty teeny tiny brush to do it with. So we'll see how well this goes. It might crash and burn, it might not, we'll just have to see. So I'm going to get out some pure white right here, and I'm just going to take the smallest possible brush that I can, which I think actually is going to be this guy right here. Yeah, so let's do this one right here. This is probably one. Yeah, one. All right. All right, and I think that the tip is already pretty sharp there, so we'll just uh, use that there. If you want, you can even just kind of take your water a little bit and just kind of get the tip just 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 a little bit into your water there. There you go. And just a little bit of white paint on there, and we'll just get the eyes. we go, there's one. And the other. Okay, so she's got some whites in her eyes now. Let's do move on with Jim Culver. We're gonna do the same thing with him. There we go, that'll be fine, okay. Let's move on to Silas here. Now we're just gonna do the one eye for him, obviously. He's got an eye patch. By the way, I do just want to really commend Fantasy Flight for making these particular miniatures so much better than the core set. I, I mentioned it in the unboxing video for Horrific Journeys here, and um, yeah, just the, the further along they get in the production of Mansions of, Mad of Madness, the more expansions they do and all that the better the miniatures are getting, I'm noticing. And I commend them very much for it. They are noticeably better. Great sculpts, great sculpts. Good job, Fantasy Flight. Okay, now Agnes has some whites there. Okay, all right. So now we've done uh, all of their eyes. Now we're just gonna move on with the dots of their eyes, and to do that, we're going to use some regular old pure black right here. Let's do Silas first, because he's probably going to be the easiest. It's always so hard to get both eyes to stare in one direction, but if your mini only has one eye, then you don't need to worry about it as much. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. That's pretty good. Okay. Let's move on with, yeah, let's do Agnes first. There we go. Yeah. Agnes has some eyes. Let's move on to Jim Culver. There we go. Now he's got some lovely eyes there. Okay. All right. And then let's finish up with Trish Scarborough. All right, and then Trish has some eyes. So there you go. I think that, you know, to be honest, I think that that's all that I really want to do with these miniatures. I think that they're table ready. I think that they've got enough detail and enough personality to, uh, to work on their own. So there you go, everybody. Thank you for watching. Uh, I will definitely be doing more of the Mansions of Madness miniatures. Hopefully I can finish up the whole set uh, as time goes on. We'll, we'll just have to see. So if you want to subscribe to my channel, you can look forward to that. Um, at some point, my wife and I are going to do some uh, more Mansions of Madness videos. Uh, somebody requested that they wanted to see the next part of Horrific Journeys, which is the 1310 to Arkham, I think is what it's called. I forget what it's called, but it's the train one. 
Uh, that one's okay. Uh, we've played it once, but uh, yeah, that's a neat one. I do really like the the one on the barge, the one on the ship. Uh, so we'll try to do that one for the channel for sure as well. You know what? Actually, <laughs> you know, I say that I'm leaving and then whatever. Uh, so I'm going to come back to it. I forgot that uh, I kind of want to do something with Jim Culver's tie there. So I'm just going to make it yellow. I'm just going to take some lemon yellow right here. And I'm just going to really quickly get some yellow on that tie. And that'll give him a little bit of color so that his suit won't look quite as drab, I guess you could say. So let's just really quickly do this. I figure that uh, yellow goes enough with the suit that it won't be too distracting, but it'll still work out quite nicely. And from what it seems to look like so far, I'd say that that seems to be about right. There we go. So that just gives him a little bit more color there. That looks very nice. Okay, that's it <laughs> for real this time. So thank you again, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.